Hello, Moonies. This is my third, take it, third take, trying to get this freaking video recorded. So, I am Natalie. I am your season 12 Monday host. And this week's topic in week five is creating sacred space away from home. Now, my mind is now a little frazzled. I had a lovely little video started for you, and the Yeti decided to come to the door and shake himself in the door, and now the dog wanted to walk in, and he can't come in here right now because I have to steam clean the floor, so it's still wet. So, <sighs> releasing, and again, creating sacred space away from home. So what I want to do is start with defining what is a sacred space, in my opinion. Everybody has a slightly different definition, and that's okay if that works for them. For me, a sacred space is any area that has been cleansed and somewhat consecrated to a purpose. So, for example, my office space. My office is a building. There's a building that goes this way. That's my landlord. My building is this one, and then the massage therapist has this building over here. My building consists of two suites and a little central corridor space that has a bathroom. So you have the therapy room. And then you have my office. And my office is one of my sacred spaces outside of my home. And that's where I have all of my witchy things. That's where I have my altars to my deities. That's where I go to do workings. Um, I was going to film this video there, but I didn't have time to go back to the office to film it yesterday. Um, I ended up meeting up with a friend for lunch. And Kristen, if you're watching... It was fun. Let's do it again. Um, found out that one of our viewers lives just a few miles away from me. And so, yay, we got to go have lunch together. It was so nice to just sit down and have some girly, witchy time with somebody. It was great. But in any case, that is one of my big sacred spaces away from home. My office is my space. I don't allow clients to go in there unless they're there for purple broom workings. So, for example, I, I have a speech practice. I'm a speech pathologist, and I have a private practice. And the therapy room is where I see those clients, but I never allow those clients into my personal office. If I need to go get something from that office, I will shut the door, and nobody follows me in there. I have a little client that she's absolutely fascinated. She keeps trying to follow me in there. Her mom's like uber Christian, so that's not going to happen. She used to pull my necklaces out and want to take a look at them all the time. And so, yeah. Anyway. <sighs> so a sacred space is a space that you have cleansed that is safe for you, where you can sit in reflection or in communion with your deity, your ancestors, or whatever spirit you are currently working with. Okay. It could be a space that you dedicate strictly to meditation. That is a sacred space because it is a space that is clear in energy and that you are using for your personal spiritual work, whether that's an actual physical working or not. A lot of people think that a sacred space has to be cleansed with sage and, you know, and, and or pal palisanto and you know, frankincense and rosemary and then you've got to have your altar with your statuary and your altar tiles and your candles and your crystals and that could be your sacred space and some of my sacred spaces are like that when i set up a sacred space for a sabbath definitely i have those things present and that signifies that for that ritual that is my sacred space but to be frank with you, my sacred space in my home would be my my kitchen. That's where I do a lot of my workings is in my kitchen. I etched candles in the kitchen. Um, I burn them in the fireplace or in the grill outside because my husband does not like candles in the home. He's an emergency management major, and so he's really wigged out about fire. So I burn the candles in the fireplace. That's our compromise. So, you know, things like that. Um, but that is a sacred space. But when you are trying to develop a sacred space outside of your home, it's very simple and you don't have to have a lot of things. So let me give you an example. Last year was my 25th wedding anniversary. It happened to fall right around Ostara and we had gone to uh, Arkansas to a cabin in the mountains in the Ozarks and it was beautiful. The space itself felt sacred because there were trees and 
animals. There were deer walking up beside the cabin at night when we'd sit out on the porch. The back of it, where the porch was, faced out to the, the woods, out into the forest. And so there were lots of deer walking by. There were bats. There were all kinds of birds. We had a woodpecker that was coming up in the morning. And, and uh, his mate, there were two, it was a male and a female. Uh, beautiful. But that space to me was almost sacred without having to be cleansed or consecrated. I had, however, taken my travel altar. And I want to show that. We showed that I showed this kind of briefly in <clears throat> the last video. This is my travel altar that Sunshine Morning Ray gave to me. And when she gave it to me, it didn't have anything on it. She left it for me to decorate. And so inside of that, I have everything I would need for ritual. So I can actually set this up as an altar. Now, I've added some things to it from when she gave it to me. But it has a cloth, and she has put a pentacle up. Not a pentacle, because a pentacle is in a circle, but a pentagram on there for me. And that is my altar cloth. And then it also has candle holders. It does have sage. She put a sage bundle in here for me. There's incense matches. Um, there's cone incense. She put a crystal in here salt, uh, a seashell, you know, to represent. There's a small dish and a bell with citrine on it. Uh, and she gave me some oil that, by the way, smells amazing. I don't know what the base of this oil is. It looked like olive oil, but this stuff smells amazing, and I, I absolutely love it. One of these days I'm going to ask her what it is. And then I also have included in here a little besom that someone made for me. I have, um, oops, I didn't realize that was loose. I have my elemental candles for casting a circle that I added here. And these are the colors, gray, white, red, and black that I use because I follow a Celtic path. And then I also included in here something I have added was more crystals. These came from Stephanie Michelle. She gave those to me. And also uh, Maria gave me a little book of shadows around Ostara during an exchange for Goddesses of the Moon. And I have put ritual into this little book of shadows so that I always have a little grimoire with me. And so this I use to create a full out, full on total sacred space for Sabbath ritual or to conduct a ritual or working. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only kind of sacred space that I create. I can create a sacred space anywhere I go just by cleansing that space energetically, I guess would be a good way to put it. Now, another way that you can create a sacred space away from home, if you want to feel like you're actually cleansing the space with something, it, many of you are, are fans of Lady Grave Dancer, and she had a video where she made a cleansing spray, and it was a bottle like this. I actually made the spray, and I swore it was here, and I thought I left it here, but I must have taken it to my office, because it took all my witchy stuff to, to the office, all the stuff. Not that some of it's still here, but it's going to have to go. Except for my travel altar, because clearly I'm going to need that if I'm going to go somewhere, so I have to pack it. Uh, but it was um, tobacco. It has a water alcohol base. It had tobacco in it. It had um, orange. Um, I forgot what you call it now. Um, when you shave off the orange peel. Uh, I keep wanting to say pith, but I, I know that's not it. it. It's a cooking term, but zest. It had orange zest in it. It had cinnamon sticks in it, and it had um, orange juice in it, you know, to give it that citrus smell and for cleansing and purification purposes. And it kind of dispels the negativity. So if you wanted to take something like that with you on a trip, you could certainly do that and just spray the area with that. I have found that I do take my sage bundle with me and I may cleanse the space with that. I will just use a mixture of salt and water and cleanse the space with that too, because then you don't have to really take anything with you. If you're staying in a hotel or someplace like that, you're finding that you need to create a space in that room for you to meditate, to do a an ancestral working or anything like that. All you have to do is just declare that space cleansed. If you wish to cleanse it physically in some way, which I personally always do. That's my personal preference. I don't think it's absolutely direly necessary, but I feel better about it. To me, it helps me with my visualization. It helps me to feel that the space is truly cleansed of any kind of negative. Because, you know, people come in and out of hotels. People get into fights. Things happen, you know. And, yeah, it, you know, it, yeah, I don't really like staying in hotels, to be honest with you. After watching Anthony Mercari and his hotel rescue... 
So I have the ickies over that. But you can even cleanse it with smoke if you wanted incense. Now, if you are in a non-smoking room, I don't recommend that. Taking that spray with you, probably a good idea. Now, <clears throat> if you're wanting to make the spray, what I found was that the stuff kept getting caught up in the sprayer. So either A, you can take a piece of cheesecloth and put the stuff into the into the cheesecloth or into a, like a coffee filter and staple it or seal it and kind of put it down in there, tie it up with wine and put it in there and leave it. Um, I personally just made up the concoction and strained it out, and that was what I did. And that way I had the essence of the items, but I could use it to cleanse the space. I use that whenever there's a fight in the house. It cleanses the negativity fabulously. Now, if you are like me, another way you can cleanse and create a sacred space. <clears throat> I always carry a deck of tarot cards with me everywhere I go every single day. This is the Spirit Keeper's Tarot. This is not one that I carry with me all the time. The one I carry with me is a, a wild unknown, but you could actually pick out some cards. Uh, I would say four cards to represent four elements. You can make them elemental. I usually take them from the major arcana and I take the guide cards. So like the hermit, the hierophant, the magician, and the empress. And I will use those as directional cards uh, to create a space around me where I can sit and meditate and do a visualization or a mental working, a spiritual working, like a, an astral working, uh, I will do that. And that is one way that I create a sacred space away from home. So your sacred space, as far as what can be a sacred space and, and what have you, a sacred space can be anywhere you are. Your car could be a sacred space. The very seat you're sitting in in the car or on a bus could be your sacred space if you are putting up your protections and cleansings to make that a sacred space. You can shut out energetically and spiritually the rest of the world and make that space yours. And I think that's important to keep in mind because I think a lot of people, especially if you're if you're new to the craft, you know you want to again you want to do it right. And so you're very enthusiastic and you think, oh you know I've got to set up a sacred space. So I've got to cleanse it entirely. And, and I do recommend cleansing your space, but I mean, you're out there with the sage and the Santo and your you know, the holy water and the blessed salt and you know, you're a circle with your brick dust. And, and that's okay because that does go into creating a sacred space. I just want you to understand that don't feel like you can't create a sacred space because you don't have any of those things with you. Here's brick dust with them. But... <clears throat> You don't have to, you know, you could take one of those little, um, you know what I'm talking about, the little brooms with the little dustpan that you have for like the car, like those spaces, something that simple, something just breathing out and saying, this space is now consecrated to this, it is cleanse, you know, to bane, to bane, be gone, be gone, go back now from once you come, negativity is not allowed, and you can create that space, just within the space around you. So whether it's in your home, outside your home, in your car, in your office, at your friend's house, in a hotel room, in the middle of the forest, you can create that space very, very simply. And I think it's important that people understand that because I think a lot of people feel that there has to be a lot of ceremony or full-on spiritual cleansing to create a sacred space, and I do not feel that is the case. In fact, I have found that the more deeper into my practice I go, my sacred space tends to exist outside of myself anyway, in terms of outside of the physical realm and more within the astral temple. So, you know, it's within that third eye and on the, the fifth dimension and higher in the fifth and tenth dimensions. My sacred space exists there, so it's always with me whether I'm home or not. And I hope that that makes sense to some. So that's my spiel on creating a sacred space. So I hope that you find this video useful, and I would love to see your comments and some ways in which you create a sacred space away from your home. Thank you so much, and bless you.